victim gets a superficial email uh, pretending to be um, from known authority or colleague or um, like organization. And this email contains uh, malicious attachment. And uh, now I am going to show how to analyze uh, this attachment to figure out if there is any malicious content uh, script inside of this document. So let's take a look at uh, email, first email that brings us a Microsoft Office document. So here you can see a message that comes from uh, unknown sender. And um, in the message we can read, uh, this is to inform you that there is still an outstanding payment of um, $12,000. We would appreciate if this could be settled no later than uh, 20th. Uh, I have attached the current invoice and the password for the document is one, two, three, four. So what is suspicious in this email is that the attachment, the invoice is uh, uh, encrypted using password and the password is provided to, to the user in uh, email. Uh, so let's take a look what is inside of this uh, document. So we can download, actually I already downloaded it. So when you open the document, uh, Microsoft uh, Word will ask you to enter the password for this document because it was encrypted. This is standard uh, Microsoft Office feature so you can encrypt uh, your document. Uh, I will show you what uh, cryptographic provider is used and which, which algorithm in this case um, is utilized. So I am entering the password I enter the password to uh, decrypt the document and uh, what can I see is uh, the message that this document is protected and uh, uh, the message asks, uh, can you Microsoft recommends the below steps. And uh, the steps number three is uh, about clicking on enable editing or enable marker and then click enable content. Uh, on the yellow bar. So you can see this is the button. The interesting thing, when I click enable content, actually I uh, execute the embedded um, active content like scripts, visual basic scripts. Yes, and uh, as you can see, even though I enable the content, I still see the same, the same page. So it was a social engineering trick to force a user click on uh, this uh, to activate the script inside of the document. As you can see, uh, there is an error produced by Microsoft Visual Basic. So uh, it seems like uh, the script executed from the document uh, crashed and uh, there is such message. So this, is, this is the proof that there is a, a script inside of the document. So let's first decrypt so we can actually uh, open it in, um, in Microsoft Office Word, uh, enter the password and uh, save the decrypted version of the document, or we can use uh, the tool. Let me find this tool. This tool is called uh, msofficescript.exe and we need to provide uh, the password, the source document and the output document. So here you can see uh, the information regarding the encryption. The provider, which is Microsoft Enhancer and a cryptographic provider. Then we have uh, algorithm ID value, which is uh, 000066OE. This is the hex uh, identifier of the algorithm. And if you go to MSDN, you, you will find that uh, this is the identifier of AES uh, cipher advanced encryption standard. This is a symmetric cipher uh, typically used for encrypting files and uh, network traffic. Then we see that the key size is 128 bits and the salt size is uh, 16. In this case, uh, this is uh, 16 bytes. It's also 128 bits. Then we can use another tool called uh, OLEA VBA. This is a mm, tool from uh, OLE tools package. Uh, I can call uh, OLE VBA to uh, analyze my decrypted document. So 
So it extracts the Visual Basic script. This is how it looks like. So we can see uh, that it saves to file. File is located in temp folder and uh, it is called qwerty2.exe. Then you can see this file is executed using uh, shell, in shell. We also have, uh, you know, HTTP request that goes to this IP address and downloads the file 3.exe. Okay, it's, uh, this script actually not very well obfuscated and uh, uh, based on this data, we can assume that it connects to the IP, uh, this server using this IP address and downloads executable file and saves this executable to temp folder under the name qwerty2.exe. And uh, the good thing with uh, OLE VBA is that um, we have, we can see indicators of compromise. This is a URL, this is IP address, this is a file name downloaded and uh, stored. Let's take a look at another example. This is uh, Excel. So here we have the same thing. The macros has been disabled by default and we can see the security warning in yellow. Here we have a message like document created in the early version of Microsoft Office Excel. To view this content, please click enable editing from the yellow bar and then click enable content. Again, if we click, I'm going to set up some monitors to see what, will, what would happen if I click yeah, enable content and uh, just a second. Let's click on enable content button. As you can see, we have uh, several process spawned. The first one is the command line. And in command line, there is a call to PowerShell. So we have a script that uh, download the file to temp folder under the name the.exe, then start this process. And we have a link also from where this file is downloaded. You can see this is a, a HTTP request. Mm -hmm. And here we actually have this PowerShell executed from command line. So PowerShell uh, is very popular and widely used in such a type of attacks because it's pretty much powerful. As you can see in a small script, it is possible to uh, create a Trojan downloader. So this small script is a simple Trojan downloader in PowerShell. Well, let's take a look at uh, Wireshark. So in Wireshark, we uh, will see the connection to this uh, server. Okay, next we need to analyze the Excel. So again, we're going to use uh, OLE VBA tool. And, uh, so we will try to extract the script. As you can see, the script is obfuscated. So it looks like this. It doesn't provide much information regarding the payload of the script. For example, here we have a, a expression, a visual basic expression that starts with the WHR, and then we have a three variable steps about later. And it looks like a declaration of the variables, but in fact, uh, WHR is a function name. And as you can see, there are three arguments that should be uh, passed to this function. This script uh, starts shell, but we don't have any indicators of compromise or any strings that will point us to URL or to the name of the file. So uh, in such case, when we can see uh, the script itself or it's uh, hardly obfuscated, we can use um, 
emulator emulation uh, program. For that, we are going to, we will be using Viper Monkey. It also extracts the script, but then it uh, starts uh, emulating the scripts. And as you can see, this process can be a little bit uh, slow. It executes uh, all the loops inside of the scripts and um, the result of such execution will be defuscated script. And uh, hopefully we will get indicators of compromise. Uh, URL that we, we seen in uh, PowerShell script and the file name and uh, other attributes. While it is uh, emulating, we can take a look at another script, at another uh, malicious document. This is a spam that was uh, used to deliver emoted malware, or it's uh, also for financial backdoor. So there is a document. Let's open and see how, how does it look like. This document is protected. To open the document, follow these steps. Uh, this document is only available for desktop laptop version of Microsoft Office Work. Click Enable Editing button from the yellow bar above. Once you have enabled editing, please click Enable Content button from the yellow bar above. Let's do the same. Let's uh, analyze it using Olea VBA tool. The script is obfuscated. You can see uh, they use concatenation for the strings and uh, it, it's not clear yeah what what is the code and again we can see the strings we can see indicators of compromise the only thing that uh, Olivia B tells us that there is a, a shell call and uh, this can be uh, suspicious and like before we can start Viper monkey to emulate the script to extract and emulate the script and uh, uh, I hope we'll get this indicator of compromise. While it is emulating, we can go to our previous document and here we got the results. In the uh, results table, we can see the command that calls PowerShell. Yeah, we can see the script and uh, in the end, we can actually uh, figure out what is the URL. You can see uh, there are two URLs. If one doesn't work, uh, another one uh, will be used. Also the file name and this file is started. So in such way, Viper Monkey could help us to identify the malicious script. Uh, okay, let's go back to, to emoted script. First, uh, we have a auto open uh, function which, which will be executed when the uh, document is opened and then we can see there is a shell yeah shell call which means uh, this script starts command line which is uh, of course suspicious also we can use uh, dynamic analysis like uh, network sniffer wireshark and process explorer to see what processes uh, have been created by the um, office application